But a lot of what we're hearing from the White House today just goes to show you that if there's anything that will really get under this president's skin, it's the idea that somebody else might be getting the credit for running things. That somebody else is pulling the strings. And he's just following along. So he's not going to be happy that there are questions tonight about whether it's his advisors who are actually running the show on a lot of big issues, from immigration to the threat of war with Iran. Well, today, the president announced a plan on immigration, one that was pretty short on specifics and said nothing at all about DACA. Our proposal is pro-American, pro-immigrant, and pro-worker. It's just common sense. It will help all of our people, including millions of devoted immigrants, to achieve the American dream. The president's son-in-law and senior advisor Jared Kushner getting the credit for spearheading the plan, which is unlikely to convince any Democrats to get on board and could very well freak out his base, even if there's, if there's even a, a whiff of compromise on letting any undocumented immigrants stay here. A senior GOP source tells CNN that there's White House infighting on this. Kushner reportedly willing to talk DACA to get a deal, while immigration hardliner Stephen Miller is all about the border battle. But with all of this infighting, let's not lose sight of the fact that the system is clearly broken. People are suffering. A two-year-old boy from Guatemala died of pneumonia this week, a month after he and his mother were captured as they crossed the border. He is the fourth child to have died after traveling here in recent months from Guatemala. This is no time to be playing politics on immigration, no time at all, no matter who is pulling the strings. And then there is a the threat of war with Iran. Sarah Sanders was sent out today to insist that the president is taking the lead on Iran. There isn't division in the White House. And um, again, there's only one agenda here, and it's the president's. And the president tweeted, of course he tweeted, that he'll make the, the decision, the decisive and final decision. But a lot of people in Washington think it's actually John Bolton who is leading the march to war with Iran. Sources telling CNN the president himself has been calling outside advisors to complain about Bolton allowing the situation to reach a point where it seems like war is a real possibility. He doesn't like that. And the New York Times reports that Trump told his acting defense secretary he doesn't want to go to war. Now, the fact is, Iran is a bad actor and certainly not blameless in all of this, but let's remember this. Donald Trump ran on his opposition to wars. I was against the war in Iraq, okay? I am not a fast trigger. I'm exactly the opposite of that. We should have never gone in and destabilized the Middle East. Should have never been in the war. Hillary Clinton is trigger happy. She really is. She's trigger happy. She's just too quick to intervene, invade, or to push for regime change with people we don't even know who they are. Obama was spending much less, but our military was being depleted. He was fighting in endless wars. They never end. Is there a risk of military confrontation, sir? I guess you could say that always, right? Isn't it? I mean, you know, always. I don't want to say no. Would I do that? Absolutely. But we have not planned for that. Hopefully, we're not going to have to plan for that. And if we did that, we'd send a hell of a lot more troops than that. Well, a threat like that, to send a hell of a lot more than 120,000 American troops to the Middle East, is not going to play well with the president's base as he gears up for 2020, and he knows it. Trump telling members of his team that uh, a large-scale military intervention would amount to breaking his campaign promises. But the chaos and the infighting over all this, well, they aren't doing him any favors right now. Even Trump supporters like Lindsey Graham complaining. They don't know what's going on. I think there are a lot of senators who feel like they're in the dark, and they dropped the ball on this. Well, the administration promising a briefing for senators next Tuesday. And speaking of briefings, or the lack thereof, this is definitely not a good look right now. Did you see who was at the podium in the Pentagon briefing room today? Take a good look. Yep. Kiss's front man, Gene Simmons, addressing Defense Department personnel. 
Seems like there could be more important things to be doing, especially at the, those very important podiums, that important podium these days, like maybe briefing reporters on the threat of war with Iran and briefing Americans, answering questions as to what's going on in this country with Iran and beyond.